All right, um, Rob, let's get to some stuff that went on over the last couple of weeks. Two weeks ago, roughly, J.J. Reddick, who, look, I'm going to credit J.J. Uh, he's done a, I think he's good, Rob. I think he gives really good analysis. I think he uh, can debate, goes at it with Stephen A. I think he's doing a good job and has a future if he wants it in this, in this broadcasting yeah. business. He's even called some games. What I you think, think he's, yeah, I mean, he's pretty good. I think he is uh, more like a prisoner of of the uh, prisoner of the moment kind of guy. Moment um, in now, in that, not in not now. just this era, but just right. like last not, night. Okay, yeah, like he's okay. one of those guys. Like okay. everything that happened yesterday is the greatest thing that ever happened. And and I think you just have to have some context. He's a young guy. I get it, but just because you didn't see the videotape or you don't know the story. If you really want to be well-rounded and balanced, you just have to. Chris, we talk about it all the time. We didn't see Babe Ruth play, but we know that he's one of the greatest baseball players who ever played. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, right. you have to have that no matter what goes on in there. You just can't totally dismiss him because he played in the 20s. You can't. Well, I think you're referring to what he said about Bob Cousin. And, exactly. and I, I present the context. He was going at it with Chris Mad Dog Russo. On first take on ESPN, and he was Russo was Russo was saying Bob Cousy was better than Chris Paul, and JJ Reddick was like, first of all, don't even bring me anybody before 1980. See, there so you go. To your there point, you right? go. That's my. That's I mean, my I can point, bring you right? a few. I can bring you Wilt. I can bring you Russell. I can but bring you. But you can't totally I mean, dismiss Dr. J everybody. Was, you know, is before what I'm he, right, 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 right. But anyway, <laughs> and he ended it. He got frustrated, I guess, with Russo's argument. And he said Kuzi was playing against plumbers and firemen. Obviously, Rob, a reference to how back then a lot of NBA players worked the second job. Every A lot of people did, and a lot of great players, Chris. Baseball players had winter jobs. They weren't making a gazillion right. dollars. They had, right. And you only got paid during the season. So a lot of these guys right. had jobs. So, I remember so we, Richie Hebner was a, was a grave digger, Chris. I don't wow. know if you remember him. He's a first baseman, played for the yeah, Pirates, the Mets, him. Richie Hebner. He, he dug graves in the offseason. Wow. Wow. So anyway, that's what Reddick said. And Bob Cousy, Rob, 93 years old, sounds like he's in great shape. He answered yesterday or the day before on Sirius NBA radio. Here he is. But I will defend the firemen and the plumbers that he referenced. How about Bill Russell? Uh, Will Chamberlain, a guy named Elgin Baylor, Oscar Robinson, Jerry West wasn't too shabby. And we must have had the best firemen and plumbers on the planet at the time. <laughs> I love the answer from Koozie. Uh, he sounds Rob. great. He, he sounds great. For 93, my goodness. Yeah, he sounds awesome. Here's what I'll say, and I've said it before, Rob, but it bears repeating. This, this is my saying, and this is my real belief and philosophy. The superstars of any era would be at least stars, if not superstars of every era. The superstars of any era would be at least stars of every era, and some of them would be superstars. And I say that because, yeah, well, f maybe if you take Bob Cousy as he was and throw him in the day, just as he was in 1961 but that and put him in the, the NBA case. today, right. then, yeah, okay, he, he'd struggle. But like you said, give him the benefits that today's players have, the weight training, the nutrition, the diet, the better trainers, the better coaching staffs and bigger coaching staffs, the charter flights, the better sneakers, the year-round play, being able to work on your game year-round, not even just as an NBA player, but as a, a high school kid if you want. Give him all of that, and don't tell me he couldn't be at least, at least as good as Chris Paul, John Stockton, Steve Nash. It, it, Rob, that's the thing. And the same goes for Will, Bill Russell, Elgin Baylor, Give them all the benefits before you start comparing them or just say, look, they dominated their era. Their era and there was nobody else for that. Right. And Chris, here's the other thing. 
There were only 10 teams. There weren't uh, 30 teams, right? Like a lot of players who, who, so only the creme de la creme of the players who were playing basketball played. There were less spots. The, one, the, the, the biggest argument, Rob, against that era, and maybe J.J. just didn't, didn't want to bring it up, but was the unwritten rule that, you know, you might only have a, a handful of black players per team. That's the biggest argument for the, against that well, era. There's no, right? there, I, I get it, and and, and it's, that's it's the it, argument. It's the argument against Babe Ruth that he never played right. against black or right. brown players his entire career. And we already know, Chris, when you look at the record books, black and brown, and I mean Latino or, or Hispanic right. uh, players, are as great as anybody, and they're all peppered throughout the record books. Right, and they weren't allowed to play until 1947, and they and they own the record books. So that says uh, speaks volumes. But it still doesn't mean that Babe Ruth couldn't play, and I'm with you. Right. Given the right uh, circumstances, Chris, not taking train rides instead of charter right. flights, they used right. to take the train. They would take the train. Yep. Yep. To games, and it was a different dynamic. And those guys were still the best of the best. And I think we got to be careful because I was mad at. I think we had talked about this before when the NBA had its top 75. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, they did keep the top fifty as it was. Because remember, we which said was that. Smart. Yeah, right. You right. can't take, you can't do it, Chris, because it's not fair to those guys right. who started the league and played under those circumstances that they played in and excelled. And it's just not fair to just go, oh yeah, well we're not going back that far. We're going to start at nineteen eighty. Right. That just because you played recently, don't mean you were better than those other guys. So I, I think, um, I think that's where JJ. You can make it, Chris, if you want to make a case against Bob Cousy, make that case. But don't try to nullify him because he played after 19, before 1980. I think that's, you can make a case. Right, right. And I'm going to say this, Rob. We show we talked about this on First Things First this morning, and we showed some highlights of Cousy. And Rob, and I've seen some here and there, but he made six passes in a, Two, one and a half minute, one minute highlight reel that today's players don't make. I'm talking about fan- passes that I've only seen Magic Johnson make consistently. Wow. I'm not lying. Over the, like, no look behind the head. Uh, I mean, ridiculous stuff. And remember, he was, at least in the NBA, the first player you saw doing the behind the back dribbles and the fancy pa- passing and things like that. And I'm saying, look, guys today aren't passing like this. Go to YouTube. Go look up some Bob Cousy highlights and look at the passes. I'm telling you, you're not seeing players today make a lot of the things he passes he made. But also, Rob, I'm going to say this, because I've always said, look, Bill Russell was about 6'9", 6'10". And really couldn't shoot, Rob, right? He was a 44% shooter from the field for his career. And, you know, obviously he was playing close to the basket. And some people would say, well, come on, what would Bill Russell do in today's NBA and all that, blah, blah, blah. But I'm going to say this, and and obviously he'd get the benefits of all we talked about earlier, and I think he'd be great if he played today. But, Rob, before all you youngsters say – Oh, uh, as he was, there's no way he could play today. Rob, what is Robert Williams the third doing right now in the 2022 NBA playoffs as a six eight center yep. who six, can't eight. shoot a lick, wreaking havoc? What did Ben Wallace do in Detroit as a six nine, if that center? He was like what four time defensive player of the year or something like that. Four time defensive and and helped him win a championship. Right, and and Draymond Green plays center at six six. I mean, not all the time, but enough. Can't shoot. So we we are saying if you give them the benefit of the doubt, you know all the benefits of today, I should say they'd be better. But Rob, even taking some of them as they were like their strength, their athleticism was top-notch, and we got guys today that lack some of the skills you think they lack and are excelling. So be careful, as Rob said, before you poo-poo the superstars of the past. We're going to throw it out to you guys. Your turn to weigh in on the Bob Cousy, J.J. Redick 
controversy. All right, Jabril in Atlanta. You're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. What up? What up? How What's you? up, man? Man, I can't call it. Hey, you know y'all my boys, right? But Uh-oh, here we go. I'm Uh-oh. glad J.J. Reddy said that because y'all generation, y'all think a lot of y'all stuff. Y'all do not want to let nothing that y'all did like, we we not up to let Bob Nip, Cousy. Y'all don't want to let Nip, our generation do. My goodness, oh, give us a little credit. I, did. I didn't see we, Bob. We didn't see right, Bob we Cousy not that play. Old. Come on, man. No, no. I know I know. not him. Y'all not in, in that generation. But y'all would not let – y'all, like, refuse to say anybody in this generation can be the GOAT. Or better than anybody. No, we don't. We say – we generation. say – hold on. Yeah, yeah, keep, stay, keep him on the line. Cause we you we say LeBron is the second best player right. ever. Oh, that's look, better than everybody. That. I'm ahead. glad you said that because anytime somebody would say like um, LeBron or KD or Steph or somebody would dominate back then, y'all would say uh, not not in the in the twenties or whenever he was talking about. But like back in the nineties or the eighties, y'all would say, right. "No, they were too physical. They were too physical." Well, hold on. Let me all right. Let me ask you this, Jabril. What happened to Kevin Durant when Boston got physical with him? Yeah, a couple weeks the, ago. The, yeah, huh? but Boston, the team on Boston is better than the team. No, from that but a lot of it was about the physicality the, of Boston. It. Hold on, Boston is better than say the Jordan Bulls or the the Knicks from back then. The, the Pistons, Pistons from the 90s? that what you're saying? Skill level, yeah. No, they're not. No, they're and not. Athleticism, Stop it. And athleticism, yeah. No, the, this was the, – the, the Bulls started Jordan, Pippen, Rodman, Ron Harper. All those guys were athletic. Long and athletic. And they got more physical because the rules allowed it. Exactly. All right, Jabril. Appreciate the call. Yeah, it's all on. right. Joe in Good Sunrise, try. Florida – you're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. What up, Joe? Who the hell is J.J. Reddick? Wet behind the ear. I know. I, I, you know I, Bob Cousy's jockstrap, little turd. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, guys, come on. Thanks. I, I know. love you, brother. Thank you. Yeah, that's all he wanted to say. Uh, Joe, right? hey, he put it out there. I'm not mad at him. Hey, how about Dylan in Michigan? You're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. What up, Dylan? Hey, what's going on? Chris Broussard, you're my favorite uh, sports analyst. Uh, Thank you, Parker. man. I appreciate you that. You give TB12 a break. But anyways, on this uh, J.J. Reddick thing. <laughs> Look at that. You uh, Tom Brady uh, lover. All right, go ahead. Hey, I'm from Michigan. Can you blame me? It's all right, though. No, all right. Uh, <laughs> I, I truly believe Bob Cousy has a place in the NBA history books, just along with all those other guys. I look at it like this. Do you look at a 70s computer the same way you look at a Mac that was just made last week? Uh, I don't think you do. But they, they all have their place in history. Yes. I think we all just view it a little differently. They all got to be remembered the same way. But I truly don't believe those guys from the 60s. And 70s could hold water in today's game. Um, what do you guys think? Thanks. Well, we said it. Look, there's a few. I mean, you take most of them as they were. No, but if you give them the benefits, that's what we're right. saying. You got to remember, it has to be all, everything right. has to be the same. And, and like I said, there are a lot of guys today that, like I Rob, I said it. People would, would say Bill Russell wouldn't be as great because he couldn't shoot and he was only about 6'10 and thin. I pointed out several guys today, Rob. Who are playing and excelling. Who couldn't shoot, right, who were doing that. So No doubt. All right, last one. Marcus in uh, Phoenix. You're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. What up, Marcus? Hey, what up, Bob? What up, guys? How you doing? Doing good, good man. How are you? Good, good. Okay, so the only thing I think, first I'll say, I think, you know, all those players back in the day definitely deserved their due. And they were, you know, I'm sure they were – Good players, great players. But the, the the elephant in the room that for me that's always going to stick out is I just don't think back in the day there's a lot of guys sitting on the sideline that wasn't allowed to be out there right. over because of the sign of the times, the race issue, right? So there were Babe Ruth and you know and Michael Jordan even maybe that we never got to see for their time back then because of that. So I think that's nah, it's true. There's no bit. doubt. There's yeah, no but, doubt but about some of the, that. But that's some of the, but some of the guys Chris is mentioning, Bill Russell was black. You know what I mean? Like uh, Will. I mean, he's t- and I get your point one hundred percent. And we we said that earlier. We, too. we did. Right. But 
But Chris is mentioning, along with Bob Cousy, some black players who did play during that era dominated Chris. And given the same circumstances and situations and benefits, we believe they would be stars. Would they be superstars? We don't know that. But they would. Right. it's not like they couldn't play in the league. To, to think that those guys wouldn't be able to play is, doesn't make sense to me. 